is an Australian icon, role model and legend. He was the most influential soccer root that helped the football in Australia develop. Without Warren, without his influence, football wouldn't be where it is today in Australia. Sadly, Johnny Warren had passed away due to cancer, leaving the Australian nation with the belief in successful growth of football with his famous saying, I told you so. I'm using Johnny Warren's autobiography called Sheila's, Wogs and Poofters, an incomplete biography of Johnny Warren and soccer in Australia, which was written by Johnny Warren himself and two other authors, Andy Harper and Josh Whittington, and it was published in 2003. According to Sports Management and Development Lecture Notes, sport delivery systems can be illustrated through a range of agencies which combine, compete, and contribute to the delivery of sports for all. These agencies and the competitions and services they deliver to participants at whatever level they are able to achieve comprise the delivery systems of sport. Sport development systems are in place to help sport succeed in the nation and to help bring participation to the sport and also to help produce elite athletes in each sport. This analysis is going to present the soccer development and delivery systems in Australia through the sport career of Johnny Warren as presented in his autobiography. In order to analyse the sport delivery systems that were at playing during Johnny Warren's soccer career, it is important to have a look at his sporting achievements. He grew up with his two brothers in the Sydney suburb of Botany, which was predominantly a rugby league area and soccer wasn't receiving much attention from the community. During that time, people who played soccer in the schools were considered to be a Sheila, a Wog, or a Pufta because soccer was regarded as a sport, not being manly enough. Warren was attending a local church youth group with his two older brothers, where the whole group chose to play soccer, which was a surprise to all since it was a strange decision considering the sporting environment they were surrounded by. At this point, at the age of five, Warren signs up for the under-12s Botany Methodist team that played in the Presentant Church's competition. He played several years for this team and then moves to Elwood Wanderers in 1958, where he manages to make the district representative team. In the following year, 1959, Warren was just 15 and was chosen to join Canterbury Marrickville, where he was playing third grade, which is two grades below the first team. But later in the year, he was promoted to first team in the first grade, where he started his first competitive debut in the New South Wales League. In 1963, Warren transferred to St. George Budapest and stayed there for 12 years, winning the New South Wales State League in three grand finals, one premiership, and two state cups. Warren's international career started in 1965, when he made his debut for Australia against North Korea, after which he represented Australia 42 times, out of which 24 times he was the team's captain. Warren was also involved in Australia's first World Cup appearance in 1974. After that, he became a player, coach, playing for St. George Budapest in Canberra City. Warren had astonishing achievements, considering that soccer in Australia in those times wasn't at the same level as soccer played by other nations. The soccer, as a less-known game, was played and organised at state level, as the highest level in 1950s and 60s. His first steps in soccer was for Botany Methodist Church Soccer Club, which regarded soccer as a social, not a competitive game. These games were played at a district level, but Warren was selected to play at state level when he was only 10. His last junior season was in the under-14s Botany Methodist Soccer Club, where he played under eight, he played 18 games in the season without losing. When he was playing for Canterbury Marrickville in St. George, the game of these clubs were considered at the highest level of football in Australia at the time, as it was played at the state level. Twelve soccer squads were competing in a season of 22 matches. There were no competitions held at national level. What is more, soccer international competitions for Australia were not possible until 1963, when FIFA lifted the ban after Australia, Australian soccer adopted the FIFA regulations. This led to the first FIFA World Cup qualifying competition for Australian squad against North Korea in Phnom Penh, where they lost. After this, Australian Socceroos continued their efforts to qualify in the following World Cups. Finally, they managed to qualify and Warren was playing at the highest level of play, competing at the World Cup in 1974. In this World Cup, 16 teams qualified by going through qualification stage in the tournament that 16 teams are drawn into four groups containing four teams per group. Each group played round robin. Each team that wins earns two points, while a draw attracts one point for each team. Once they have versed everyone in the group, 
the top two teams proceed to the knockout stages until there's a winner in the final. Soon after, competitions at national level become possible with the creation of National Soccer League in 1977. According to Skinner, Zakus and Edwards, this meant that teams from different states across Australia compete in one league. Warren was involved in the promotion of NSL and as a coach of Canberra City. This, the NSL lasted from 1977 to until 2004 when the A-League was established, but which kicked off in 2005 as the successor of the NSL League, just one year after Johnny Warren passes away. According to Shelby and Kellett, sport development is a term which people working in sport manager have become familiar with since the 1980s. Although the term is commonly understood in the contemporary sports system, it is important to recognize that sport development has probably been in existence since the first signs of organized sport. Also, these authors state that soccer pathways have been developed to allow talented juniors to progress to play in state league competitions, the A-League, or at the top level or to represent Australian international competitions. Although this is an important outcome, it is not the sole focus of sport development. It is just important for sporting organisations to provide a number of sporting competitions to cater for participants of all ages, sexes and abilities. However, it is important to emphasize the lack of sport agencies dealing with soccer. During Warren's career as a soccer player, his first team, Botany Methodist, was a local junior church league which was organized and set up by the church's volunteers and members. In 1959, when he was ready to progress to the next level, the New South Wales League, there were no transition programs or support the government to help him as a junior to transfer to senior levels. Warren Harp and Whittington, Whittington are explaining that when playing for Botany Methodist Soccer Club, Warren's career path was uncertain, as the club did not have a career path to senior football. The players had to find themselves a senior team and to prove themselves if they wanted to climb up the upper levels. This development obstacle may have existed due to lack of funding. Warren Harper and Winston have recognised this issue through the efforts of Canterbury's coach Bernard Tugger Bryant, who in the 1950s were trying to establish a youth structure in the club, capturing the new migrant talents and the money they were pouring into soccer. According to Shelby and Kellett, Sport development systems were given more support in the 1970s when the government funding to sports began to grow. Well, this brought a debate whether the money was to be allocated either to elite or mass participation programs. Sport development is traditionally represented through the sport participation pyramid, which shows the pathways of sport from performance levels at starting point, including school sport, casual, recreational, social participation, and moving up to first local club level, and then to regional followed by state or territory, national, and then finally international level. Warren had been part of all these participation levels. However, this period only allows for progression between levels, which somehow coincides with Warren's playing pathway. Soccer player development is better captured with three processes graph, which allows for different movements and processes, not just moving upwards. Warren biography provides some glimpses in the emergence of some changes in training and techniques, which started with supporting young talents, providing specialized coaches, developing good habits through the game, and extending the club activities into the community. Also, efforts were put into establishing the Australian Coach Federation, but the lack of agencies and support for the sport and the players were constantly evident. Warren Harp and Whittington state that when playing World Cup qualifying matches in 1969, the Soccer Roos exper- experienced hard times as the Australian Soccer Federation failed to support them. After the changes towards National League, in 2013, National Premier Leagues were introduced to Australian football as a second tier of, of football in Australia, even though there is no promotional relegation between A-League and National Premier League. The National Premier League are the highest state level league level in each state. These leagues were established for development reasons, to have more teams involved around Australia, to produce talented players and also to have football develop in each state as soccer is a sport with a lot of potential development. Warren was involved in promotion of the A-League and all Australian football development, but sadly he didn't get to see the A-League launch. The only soccer governing agency that mentioned by Warren Harp and Winkington is the Australian Soccer Association, which was replaced by Australian Soccer Federation in 1961. Today, this function is provided by the Football Federation Australia, the FFA.
According to Shelbury and Kellett, a definition for sports development by Collins states that sport development is a process whereby effective opportunities, processes, systems and structure are set to set up to enable and encourage people in all particular groups and areas to take part in sport for recreation or to improve their performance to whatever level they desire. In comparison to this definition, it is clear that pr the processes Warren had to go through in order to become an elite athlete are a bit different considering that soccer then wasn't well organized as it is today. Also, there is no government or organizations funding for footballing organizations and the development of soccer players or clubs. Sport organizations at the time weren't at the highest, but they still did play a part in Warren's career to become successful through the development they had. Football wasn't big as the other footballing codes, as football at the time wasn't receiving much attention. The developments they had were controlled and organized by volunteers or members of the soccer clubs across the nation. Majority of these clubs were controlled by European migrants that came to Australia and wanted to bring soccer with them. These European migrants have biggest influence in soccer in Australia as majority of them made the clubs where most of the players of are of European background. They also didn't have many agencies or media coverage as it's known today. According to Shelbury from 1970s to the 2000s, sport have witnessed the creation of Australian Institute of Sport, Aussie sport programs, Active Australia and policies designed to assist national and state sporting organisations to employ professional staff and develop their sport programs. AIS, the Australian Institute of Sport, is the biggest institute and program in the country. Majority of the Australian elite athletes have to come through the AIS. They are provided with development programs that they go through with the best coaches and staff from the nation to help them reach their highest level in the sport they are participating in. Another issue when Warren was playing was a lack of media coverage for soccer compared to the other footballing codes. According to Warren Harper and Whittington, there never seems to be footage of goals in games, but the rare moment that there is any sort of crowd disturbances, the cameras are there to capture the action. They also say that games were hardly televised. Since then, football had developed seeking all the media's attention, having broadcasting rights for the A-League and international games. The biggest channel that started off promoting football in Australia was SBS, and is still the leading channel to this day. Now channels such as Fox Sports have joined the race to broadcast and advertise football in the country. The biography clearly gives me a view of sport delivery systems, development and organisations that existed in football during the time Warren was playing. I believe that without delivery systems that exist today in Australia, sport would have never developed to its current stage. Warren and his counterparties went through sport stages without having organisations that we have now, such as the Australian Institute of Sport, government funding or media coverage that we get. However, even though sport development is not given the main attention in the text, the beginning of soccer development systems can be attributed to some extent to period of 1950s, described in his autobiography, especially their attempts to bring younger players in the state league. The importance of financial support was also acknowledged to some extent. I can already compare my own experience in soccer from the developments I went through compared to Warren as I'm still playing in the National Premier League which is the second tier of the A-League, A-League that didn't exist when Warren was playing. This analysis gave me more insights into the historical perspective of soccer development in Australia and the number of years that have been needed to reach the development stage of the current sport delivery systems which are organised from the national level down. The presence of all government sport agencies enabling the sport delivery processes with the support of necessary policies gives the hope for development and support of all sports in Australia. Therefore, Warren's belief that soccer players and fans can achieve the highest of all and help the game develop to its finest is getting more meaning, knowing that this belief is possible. And on behalf of Warren, I would like to finish this presentation with a famous saying from the legend himself, I told you so.